5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's Nightly News Roundup. I'm Roland Boyden. I'll be taking you through the next 15 minutes into the regularly scheduled 6 o'clock news as we try and jam-pack it in after our brief spring sabbatical. We'll uh, return to the news uh, cable television waves, airwaves, uh, with a little talk about the sequester. It's really hit home. We'll find out more from uh, the town school district board meeting. Uh, we've been following this 2013 legislative session all spring long, and it's come to a close. We'll find out what the governor has to say about it, do a little summary for you. And as we hit our seven-town summary and talk about uh, the Dummerston Select Board, it always heats up when they talk about uh, the emergency management, evacuation plan, all that and more. I'm going to talk just this fast, if not faster, so it's going to happen in 15 minutes or less. So stick with us right here on 545 Live. <laughs> Jams of one uh, Peter Miles, who uh, was part of BCTV's live auction band jam this past Saturday, which went from 12 noon to 8 p.m. right here on BCTV Channel 8. That's right, eight straight hours of live broadcasting, uh, both from the Brattleboro Select Board meeting room uh, downstairs in this 230 Main Street uh, office, where uh, folks like Daryl Pillsbury, BCTV board member, and uh, Steve West, also on the board, uh, hosted a live auction and bid on uh, close to 100 items making uh, their way uh, out into the community. Now we also had uh, over eight uh, live, perform uh, live performances from bands up in our studio. Uh, along uh, here with our brand new set, quite a time. You can see that full eight hours in just 12 minutes, courtesy of our auction highlights reel, uh, which is now currently featured uh, right on the homepage at brattlebrotv.org. All right, into the stories we go, which means into the newsroom we go, which means into my close-up we go. That's kind of how things uh, tend to happen around here. Let's uh, start with a word that's been sending shutters to the hearts of government-funded outfits across the country uh, all spring, sequestration. The federal government uh, self-imposed spending cutoff responsible for 8% uh, budget reductions across uh, the board to virtually every federally funded organization, something that Brattleboro Early Education Services Executive Director Deb Gass, who also heads up the federally managed Head Start program here in Brattleboro, says will have more than just a passing impact on our community. But she says organizations like hers are prepared for the sequester. And fresh off a regional review for Head Start, Gas told the Town School District Board this week that the Boston-based board has lobbied for a bigger, not smaller, budget for her this year, asking Gas to reduce uh, only the mandated 5.27% for one year, not the full eight over two years, a move that would preserve transportation services, which uh, she and they believe are vital to uh, enrollment in the program. We've got the clip to uh, back up the story, courtesy of hardworking BCTV volunteer M. Richards. Let's take a look. The um, regional staff had their strong conviction that we reinstate the transportation in Brattleboro. So for the next year, we can do that. We can certainly run the buses, which of course will help our attendance, which is really where their concerns were. Moving on, let's talk about the State House. We've been following this. Uh, all spring long, there's been plenty to talk about, and with the governor's adjournment uh, prompted a, another piece of the script here, which prompted another close-up. Governor Shumlin's adjournment speech this week brings the curtain down on a state legislation session packed with noteworthy bills sure to leave some Wyndham County reps satisfied and others beleaguered with locally sponsored topics like death with dignity seeing their momentum drained, while Northern Democrats looking for civil liberty improvements to law enforcement policies can put a notch in their walking stick with new laws that limit police license plate scanning and GPS monitoring, among others. At the uh, State House on Tuesday, Shumlin talked about the tenacity of Vermonters in the continuing wake of the recession and the work still left ahead. Oh, and also uh, their tenacity. Did he mention that? Vermonters are tenacious. I think that was in there somewhere. Let's take a look at the clip. Now, I know the company still present. She agreed. The operation that she was talking about was keeping our focus on the kitchen table issues 
facing for models after a painful recession. Governor Peter Shumlin, courtesy of his YouTube channel. If you want to catch up on all the legislative session happenings and summaries, you can head to vermontdigger.org, where Ann Galloway has been posting. Uh, she's uh, done some work also for commonsnews.org, Brattleboro's uh, independent paper, where they're talking about it as well. Uh, all right, we'll move on here now and uh, talk... Uh, We'll get a little bit of the script here from our hardworking intern, Marco Skorstad. Here's what he writes for today. The owners of the Putney General Store have decided to get their own pharmacy to serve the local area. As it stands currently, there isn't a pharmacy within 10 miles of Putney. The director of the pharmacy at Grace Cottage Hospital in Townsend is going to run the Putney General Store pharmacy with his wife. Now, after obtaining his license, he will run the pharmacy, which will uh, is slated to locate on the upper floor of the store. Pharmacy is expected to be open sometime in August or September. Now, uh, we can uh, get more of those stories, courtesy of Marcus Korsted, just a little bit later in our news program today. But first, uh, back into the headlines. Just uh, one subtle cut and flashy animation away from doing that with our next bit of talk here. Let's talk strolling in the heifers. It's going to be all anybody talks about for the next month, so gear up. Uh, but with a deadline looming at midnight tonight, uh, we've got a story here uh, right now. The uh, cutoff is at midnight tonight for contestant entries to the Stroll's Great New England Quiche Cookoff, which seeks to showcase fresh local ingredients by gathering recipes for the egg-based savory pie from both amateur and pro chefs and collecting the stories behind the recipe, something Stroll General Manager Julie Potter says is what the event's celebration of Vermont agriculture is really rooted in. She was here in our downtown studios to talk with none other than WTSA's Tim Johnson for an hour-long interview uh, with uh, other members of the Stroll party as well. Well, we've got her clip talking about uh, this quiche fiesta. We decided that it would be interesting to collect the stories of where these quiche recipes came from as well, because the stories also help to make it interesting. So not only do you have good quiche, but now you have some good stories to go along with it. Quiches uh, will be judged at a private event this coming May 29th and announced during the Stroll's Build Up Week. Moving on, anyone who follows the Dummerston Select Board knows that an agenda that includes emergency management is bound to land a few uh, extra minutes to viewers, and last night's regular meeting of the board was no exception as Chair Zeke Goodband questioned the town's evacuation plan, something he says relies too heavily on residents having prior arrangements for providing their own shelter. But, says the town's emergency management director, Rick Davis, there, that's one issue that the town should turn over to the feds. Let's uh, head back into our Seven Towns summary video, courtesy of uh, BCTV field producer Rich Melanson, and take a look. The assumption is that many people will have friends and relatives that they can go to, but there are going to be thousands of people that won't have a place to go or room in the shelters. That... When you have a mass exodus of refugees from an area, mm -hmm. your federal government will come in in any hotel, motel, is going to be evacuated and the people who are the evacuees are going to be put into those places. Moving on here, let's uh, head back into the newsroom and talk uh, briefly uh, about uh, the West River Park. In recent news, the Greater Brittleboro area was able to raise $800,000 to open the new West River Park. Just two years ago, Rec and Parks Director Carol Allott broke ground in the cornfield. She says uh, now she's amazed by how fast the project has come together. On May 18th at 2 p.m., there's going to be a grand opening celebration. Now, uh, we've got a clip of Carol at last year's groundbreaking ceremony. Uh, now, more than one year behind us, courtesy of our hardworking producer, Joseph Bushy. Let's roll it. Uh, this is an exciting time for the department. We have completed phase one. The grass is growing, as you can see. It looks beautiful. Um, and we couldn't do it if, if we didn't have the donors and pledges that we had. All right, uh, that's it for our Welcome Back Weekend edition of 545 Live. Be sure to check in with us next Tuesday for another live broadcast from up here on our, the rooftop of our 230 Main Street studios here. Thanks to everybody at BCTV that makes public access uh, a grade above what you'd expect it to be. Thanks to everybody who watches 545 Live, makes it worth producing, and all of the volunteer producers who kick in their two cents and help me put this show together. That's all I got for you. Night, everybody. Yeah, the pillows? Just got a bit on Blue moose. Love those guys. These are beautiful. You got a bit on Okay. Pillows? Beautiful. Yeah, nice pillows on. right here. Ooh. And they're fresh with Daryl's face oil on them, too. Yeah. <laughs>